بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين إلى يوم الدين أما بعد لا يلدخ المؤمن من جحر واحد مرتين A believer is never beaten by the same hole twice Repeatedly, we are different advisors. We should be cognizant of every advice and make a near to practice. From nafs to shaitan to the environment, an effort has been made to destroy the people of Iman. So we should be vigilant and make sure we don't get caught. They say if someone steals your password, you can still change it. But if somebody steals your thumbprint, you can't get a new thumb. So the failure mode here is very, very different. It's another ball game. So when we move on to the technology platform, the variables are indefinite. So we shouldn't be caught up in the systems. And uh, once a person is in, it is difficult to get out. Privacy is dead. Social media holds the smoking gun. So any moment, any opportunity, constantly your data is being harnessed. So we hear in what needs to be done. We say we need to be secure. But when it comes to doing something, we're far from it. We spend our time searching. We want to be secure, online security, safety. But when we get the solutions, then we say, I hate this, so it is too difficult. So we look the easy way out. People don't even have login passwords. When they open their phones, there isn't even any protection whatsoever. We are so ghafil. And don't wait for anybody to come and don't expect anybody there to be for you. You're on your own. So I should say I am responsible for my own security. No government, no service provider, no vendor, nobody is going to come to save you. So these platforms as well breach on a, on a global level and uh, the awrat, the privacy of the believers become breached very easy. So once Nabi alayhi salatu was salam saw a person performing ghusl in an open space. فَسَعِدَ الْمِنْبَرْ فَحَمِدَ اللَّهِ وَأَثْنَى عَلَيْهِ وَقَالِ so after reciting the khutbah, Nabi alayhi salam advised Sahaba, Inna Allah Azza wa Jalla hayyun sittirun. Verily Allah, the mighty, the sublime being, is forbearing, modest, and concealing. Yuhibbul haya wa satr. He loves modesty, he loves Concealment. فَإِذَا اخْتَسَلَ أَحَدُكُمْ فَلْيَسْتَتِرْ Whenever you perform ghusl, make sure you conceal yourself. So, سَاتِرْ يَسْتُرُوا عَلَىٰ أَبْدِهِ كَثِيرًا مِّنْ أُيُوبِهِمْ Allah is the one that will conceal false. وَلَا يَذَرْعَ عَلَيْهِمْ This concealment is a favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibn Athir is mentioned. مِنْ شَأْنِهِ وَإِرَادَتِي حُبُّ السَّتْرِ وَالسَّوْنِ It is part of the shan. It is part of the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he conceals false. So this is Allah Rabbul Alameen. We should have this nature as well. One is concealing our brother's false. One is concealing your own false. Nowadays you don't, wait for, you don't need to wait for others to do it. People themselves expose themselves and expose their flaws. 
علماء بيهقي is also mentioned أنه ساتير يستر على عبده كثيرا Allah does not disgrace his servants and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves that his servants conceal their flaws and save themselves from those places which they will be disgraced so not putting yourself into that position that place where your honor could be snatched is also important Allah Maunawi has mentioned تارك لحب القباء لحب القباء ساتر للعيوب والفضاء. So Ajib, that a person abandons anything that is abhorrent and concealing any flaws and embarrassment, anything that will open the door to embarrassment, disgrace. Etc. A person, a believer, is vigilant. He is worried about his honor. He is worried about his shame. He saves himself from any scandal or being discredited. Allah Ibn Ibn Qayyim has mentioned some qasida poetry. Wawal hayyu falaysa yafdahu abdahu inda tajahur minhu bil isyan. لكنه يلقي عليه ستره فهو الستير وصاحب الغفران. It is Allah is such that He does not expose His servant no matter how openly He exposes His gunas. Allah still conceals and protects him. Allah puts a ستر a بردة over him. Allah is the one that conceals. Allah is the one that overlooks flaws. So you also do this. That's why the Muhaddithin have, have gone into detail about this concealment. It is a quality of Allah. You should get this quality. تَخَلَّكُوا بِأَخْلَاقِ اللَّهِ وَأَسْبَغَ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعَمَهُ ظَاهِرَةً وَبَاطِنَةً Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made complete his favors to you outwardly and inwardly as well. Al-Muqatil has mentioned that the Zahir is Islam externally. Allah has favored you with Islam but internally مَا سَتَرَوُ اللَّهُ مِنَ الْمَعَاسِلِ The sin that a person commits, the zikuna, and this uh, disobedience, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala covers it up. So where there is a possibility of a stain, humiliation, degradation, is his dignity to be lost, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserves and protects his servant. So we need to start, we need to make effort, we need to be ambitious and desirous to achieve our target and we need to start now we shouldn't wait when things do go wrong Alama Sheikh Tanwi Rahimullah Mujuddin you say that people have become laxed this is the common malady and sickness that we want ease then we say we'll work we'll let things go right let me get sorted out then I'll start the so he said the law is first to start work, then is will follow. Do Allah's work, then you'll say barakah. You say you're waiting for the barakah, then you're doing to get sorted out, then you're going to do the effort of deen, then you're going to strive in Allah's path. Then you're going to give your life for law, aren't you sorted out? No, sure Allah you're genuine. So in the dunya system, we may get without any effort. For akhirat, in the system of Allah, man jadda wa jadda. We need to show Allah we are genuine. Like a wife addressing her husband said, Do you love me just because my father left me a fortune? She's addressing the husband. Because my father left me a fortune. That's why you love me. So he said, not at all, darling. I would love you no matter who left you the money. I would love you. No matter who left you the money. So dunya things come easy, but for akhirah we need to make efforts. So we need to be cautious. 
so part of privacy the different networks that are out there whether it's the AT&T's or the Verizon's or the Vodacom's or the MTN's of the world if you look at a letter in one of these networks letter to Congress they store cellular data for five years minimum so besides that location data is stored and not only by the networks but the vendor as well so your carrier may be AT&T but the vendor is Google Android platform iPhone Apple so your geolocation your data so we've been monitored constantly then many people are into these fitness devices Fitbits uh, bracelets fuel band etc or your your Samsung Sony Apple smart watches so these bands watches track you so they record your activity they record your cheapest information they uh, a, a term has been coined now recently so surveillance it's surveillance and surveillance so the word so is a French word means below so surveillance means that normally surveillance is watched by cameras people outwardly yeah you've been watched below from small devices around you which you wear on your bodies somebody who had a tracking device and uh, he went into the data and he found even when he was intimate with his wife that was showing why because the heart rate increases as a significant increment so even Fitbit they had a report where they logged these activities so when when you are intimate also they, they are they are watching that how often etc etc that data could be used which place and eventually if they needed to blackmail people activate the uh, hidden cameras audios and, and use that against a person there's, there's so many scandals so we need to take precaution so even if we go back in history how the world has changed how the nature how the mindset how the mizaj of people has changed it, it's 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 gone com com completely opposite in the 1880s history records that a group of women smashed a camera on board a train because the owner of the camera wanted to take their picture so women in those days were so modest they found it and go back to the 1880s and we will find that the women were over cladded they were well cladded so non-muslim women well cladded women didn't want somebody to take their picture in UK youngsters used to gang together roam beaches and if they found anybody taking pictures of the ladies on the beach they would beat them up and they would threaten them this this was the haya in those days for disbelievers can you imagine what what's what, what's the condition of the Muslim woman now so we need to introspect one of the authors um, who have written an article in the 1890s wrote that uh, these photographs have invaded our privacy our private life our domestic life and they had a movement for the US law to recognize this as privacy means if you are on the streets nobody can take your picture and there was laws certain states actually passed legislation you could not take a picture of anyone on the street now moving down generation where we've got instantaneous access 
what has happened to the zamana and uh, it's going to get worse the surveillance system the Dajjali system the one eye cameras will become um you will see from whoever to ever the religious the the, the so-called pious tabaka will compromise on the deen then you have technology that's out there drones so these robotic companies are all with cameras as well so you could invade a person's privacy because these drones are at such a distance you won't even know and with the zoom features um, you've become a target and it is used in, in, in nowadays advanced warfare drones also is part of the future so people are sitting in containers and they have a control room and and they've got a lot of power at their fingertips so these personal drones are literally peeping toms on steroids and then it's become common it's become the norm so we need to protect ourselves as well so you've got these uh, monitoring surveillance systems that are out there where police agencies etc you could be walking in a mall there's cameras there facial recognition so we need to do counter uh, intel counter privacy so there's different gadgets out there the privacy visor it's a, a eyeglass which uh, produces light only visible to cameras so uh, this uh, glass photosensitive light is emitted around the eyes and that's this uh, blocks it thwarts facial recognition systems so that's one thing then now recently to 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 protect one from this surveillance you've got clothes and accessories that uh, make a person undetectable so it basically just tricks uh, the algorithm then you got uh, surveillance exclusion masks which uh, blocks facial recognition from all angles then you get the wearable face projector so it beams a image on your face with a new appearance Your cars are moving into tech as well so do researches just to show the vulnerability so the future of warfare will be in the press of a button they needed to deactivate somebody removing from the face of the earth we just remotely it could be done so Miller and Falasek were two researchers where they had hacked into a Toyota Prius but to show this is while they were in the car but to show that how successful and we're talking like 2015 they took control of a Jeep while it was traveling down a freeway it's around plus 100 kilometers an hour and they could remotely control the car remotely they were not even near the clear car but remotely so this experiment caused Chrysler to recall 1.4 million million of its cars imagine 1.4 million cars recall the first recall of its kind so and they had to suspend the the connection with the network which was used for telematics data etc uh, real-time data and uh, these two researchers said they could take us from other states means you in one place and a thousand two thousand three thousand kilometers away you can control somebody's car and history will document it as an accident he met up in an accident so it's an accident it was planned a reporter once had an interview at Uber and they were a bit delayed so the general manager came out and said that I was tracking you there you are 
So this is called the God's view. So there's, there's a lot of tools out there, but Uber tracks the location of all the drivers, their customers in real time. So when you download an app, you're giving them access. And uh, between the Wi-Fi, the GPS location, and even if you are not using the app, it is monitoring you. So Uber can compile a, a, a personal dossier for each of its customers. So it records every trip that you make. Uh, it collects the geolocation data. It uh, has uh, a spine capability. So this, this, this tool where these monitoring systems and that's what Dajjal will be doing. He'll play God. I know where you are. I know what you're doing. And uh, you have five minutes to live. Lock the car up and send it down a cliff. You can't escape. You can't press the brakes. You can't do nothing about it. Even with NFC. So people are using the bus, train, ferry network. The tag uh, on public transportation system. So between the tags, the NFC, and your different payment gateways, Apple Pay, Android Pay, Samsung Pay, they can tell exactly what you are doing. And then the different gadgets that are on there, on there I mean, this is what the little bit that we, we, we mention in, but there's so much other aspects to monitoring and uh, abusing people. So we, we, we need to be very careful and cautious and, and, and take precaution. The amal for today is من صلى لله أربعين يوما في جماعة 40 days you read salat with jama'at takbir ula. So salat with jama'at and takbir ula. When Imam Sub says Allahu Akbar you are there. كتبت له براءتان two securities براءة من النار protection from the fire of Jahannam and براءة من النفاق security from hypocrisy may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us to fikum make an amal wa akhir da'ana alhamdulillah ya rabbil alayhi